You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. Oh, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Braxton Family Values After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Braxton Family Values After Show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the dopest song ever. Get a Bieber, Will I Am. I know it's the Braxton's After Show, but this is my cut right now for the weekend. Bing is for doing. What's up, you guys? Jason J. Carter here with another Braxton Family Values After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. What's up, my lovely, beautiful, stunning co-host? Hello, everyone. I'm Ashley Gray. Make sure to tweet us here at AfterBuzz TV during the show if you have any questions or if you want to join in on the conversation. Uh, happy Pride, um, all you After Buzzers out there watching today. And if you haven't are, are watching today, wish you all the best. You know, it's really, really cool. Los Angeles um, Gay Pride Weekend was this weekend. Lots of fun, lots of parties, lots of fun, lots of parties. That's all I have to say, but that's all I did. <laughs> Anyways, though, tonight we are doing the finale of season three of the Braxton Family, Family Values. Values. And wow, this season went by in the blink of an eye. Mm-hmm. Normally they have at least... 20 or, or I would say 15 episodes, but I feel like they didn't. It's been only like 10 episodes. Yeah, I mean, it went by pretty fast, and it was great. It was very entertaining. I loved it. You know, can't get enough of the Braxton family, yeah. sisters. Me neither. And we see some things unfolding tonight. Well, you know, with every mm. reality show, they have to have a cliffhanger. They have to have something that's like, oh, no. Ugh. Dang, now we got to wait till I don't know how many months the fall for or whenever they're coming back for the Braxtons again. Yeah. But we'll talk about that later. Let's let's go let's go in chronological little order of what happened <laughs> in the finale. So okay. We'll get we gotta touch on Mama E real quick because she's getting more of more not I wouldn't say it's attention, but she's getting more <laughs> Screen time in her own personal life now, because in the past, it's always been Mama E just attending to the girls. Now she's dating, you know, a guy who's also a diabetic. And I, well, I mean, they have something in common. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I mean, no, diabetes is a very serious thing. However, they ha- they both are diabetic. So, you know, look, when you can relate with somebody on anything, it's no, like, No, I totally you agree. Know? They can relate. They can have conversations about it. They can watch each other's eating habits. So, you know what? <laughs> It's you. You got it in common. Hey, but you took your insulin. <laughs> but, <laughs> exactly. Do you want me to give you an insulin shot, baby? <laughs> That's horrible. So you know we and Mama E goes to play golf with the guy, mm-hmm. and he kept saying like, "Oh, you hit it from the back." I was like, "Please do not let that go left because it, it could have been." It, you know, I thought Mama E was going to be like, what, "What do you mean you hit that from the back?" Because she's always thinking everyone's disrespecting her. You know, yeah, that's disrespect. You know, so I thought the guy was, like, trying to be, you know, fresh, but he wasn't. He was just showing her how to play golf, which she claims that she's really good at it, but I don't know. How in the hell do you become really good at golf? <laughs> I, apparently, it's a hard sport, and T- Tiger Woods has made billions. Yeah. But I feel like, how? I mean, like, do you, like, is there a gym you go to learn how to play golf? Like, I work out my golf muscle every it day. Takes, it takes a lot of technique. Oh. So I think that I think that's what she means by you know she's good at golf. But I want to go back to that I hit it from the you got you hit it from the back <laughs> comment because I was like what? Like I know that he I think he was trying to be fresh. fresh. I, I me think too. so. And Mama E, you know she old. She probably don't know what that means. Right. It went. Whoosh right over her head and he was like nah play i'm about to hit this from the back i know which, and she's like oh, she's like oh okay. okay is that the new technique and then i was thinking like if that's what he meant and again after brothers we're not trying to be inappropriate <laughs> however it was quite it was watching it was kind of like made you a little awkward because you're like they're Ew, old they're all- <laughs> Ah. I'm like, I don't want it. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> do not paint that visual for me, please. Yeah. Mm. Dirty. Okay, and we're back to PG. So that's that for um the for the guy. And apparently he has a really nice car. He's got coins. 
Well, Tracy was like, that looks like a rent a car. I don't know. But then again, she was hating because we'll, we'll talk we'll, about that later. We're going to arrive at that She bus had stop. a tootie wooty. Yeah. So, okay, girl. She did. She did. So we also see Tony in the studio making a video in the studio and also on set with Kenny Baby. Can we get a round of applause yes, for that, that. Steven? Yes, because we we've been waiting for this. A round of applause, Steven. Okay, wow. see, I can't. Wow, you know, let's, let's just go home. <laughs> I, had to, I had to move it to a different soundboard so it's not in the same place. <laughs> no We're going to start over. We're going to get a round of applause for Tony Braxton being back in the studio with Babyface. Thank you. There we go. There we go. We have been waiting for this all season. We were so freaking just like On heartbroken yeah. because we're like, she cannot honestly give up music. This uh, is like what she lives for. Mm -hmm. So it was great. I'm so happy to, you know, I'm in suspense waiting to see what's going to happen next with them. Me too. Well, here's the thing with their relationship, though. Back in the night, ba I mean, Babyface is one of the most prolific producers, composers ever. I mean, mm -hmm. he has hit after hit after hit with so many artists. Yeah. For everyone from Tony to Madonna to bands like Fall Out Boy. Mm -hmm. You know, he Babyface is that transcending and that, you know, eclectic in his sound. So him getting back together with Tony Braxton is a no-brainer. Yeah. And even Tamar is like, you know, we want to hear that. You know, he did her first album, her second album, a couple tracks off her third and fourth album, we're, but we're not going to talk about that because, that, you know, it's they, like, they had a falling out. Yeah. Mm. But them yeah. being together back in the studio is good. And Tony Braxton is such an amazing vocalist. Tony Braxton, you know, yeah. she said she has... She, I would say she's one of those vo iconic vocalists. When you think about mm -hmm. female R&B singers, of course you're gonna bring up Tony. It's that good soul music. It's right. like It's like it, it does something to you. It exactly. makes you feel good. Right. So I'm excited. You know, one thing that I I'm secretly <laughs> you know I, I want to happen. Hmm. I want Tony and Baby Babyface face to, get to get together. I, I see the chemistry. Yeah, I'm like, sure. what's going on? I'm seeing it and I'm feeling. I'm like, oh. But she is consistently referring to him as her big brother, her mentor. Girls do that. And he's a, he's a little bit older than her. He's in his 50s. No. Not that it matters, but I think that, and Tony, he, and they have, and again, there may, we're putting this all out there for, <laughs> for the universe, but there may be chemistry, but they also have that work relationship history and things that happened that transpired previously before they got to this point now, you know, the lawsuit, bankruptcy, the falling out with the face records with Arista. There's a lot of things that happened yeah. in the past 20 years with Tony and Babyface that could possibly you know, have maybe put the nail in the coffin on certain situations. However, we're not going to talk about the past. We're going to talk about the future. Now, yeah. we are celebrating that Tony Braxton was back in the studio and on a set with Babyface. Mm -hmm. And I just hope, you know, it works out. I think the world would love at least adult contemporary. Tony's audience may have changed a little bit. It definitely from, I mean, that audience back from the 90s and early 2000s is older now. We're mm -hmm. in our 30s. We're in our 40s now. So we're that, that Tony's music style is more adult contemporary mm -hmm. versus urban or pop you know she's that yeah. she's that she's transferred into that realm so maybe they can give us you know a nice little something here and there but tony really needs to do her own album and just not and just have babyface produce the music yeah and just can call it a day and not try to do things with him because then i feel like it's it's really diverting her from being that pop that diva image it's like oh well it's tony and babyface you know it's not yeah but i think that she really wants that's her that's her life support yeah in a certain you know because she's scared she's nervous so she feels as if 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 i do this with him then you know we'll, safe yeah it's like if we go down we go down together but yeah. if i do this by myself and i fail then right. you know i just it's she validating feels how she feels already. yeah exactly so i think that it's smart for her to do something with Babyface because she'll have that support. She'll have that confidence. And it's just one, you know, one single. You know what I mean? And we would love to hear that. Like, Tony ba Braxton and Babyface, that right. just sounds like history in the making. Gold. You know what I mean? It's platinum right there. So, kudos to Tony Braxton. I'm excited. Hopefully, they hook up, have some little Babyface babies. Oh, God. I mean, I just love them together. Um, first of all, I... I, I don't I think Babyface is dating Nikki Pattenberg who used to dance for Janet Jackson and he also has a baby with her. It's okay. I, I think they're still together. We should we, <laughs> we should find the receipts on that. <laughs> we should do our homework. We are journalists, damn it. We are professional. We will do our homework. So all right, so Tamar is pregnant. <laughs> Oh my god. Duh. And <laughs> but you know, I'm loving Tamar pregnant. Mm -hmm. She's just as dumb and obnoxious and amazing as she was when she was not pregnant. <laughs> and they're trying to have a baby shower for her. So they're trying to figure out what kind of baby shower gifts to get her. Mm -hmm. 
and it's perfect. Tawana's like, well, I'm gonna get her shirts of all her phrases. Like, that ain't hot. Yeah. You did that. He, me, she, her. Get your life. Yeah. Even though, like, I don't, I don't think she liked them. Like to me, it just seemed like she was um, ungrateful. She's like, oh, okay, yeah, throw that over there. She can have that. She can have that. I was like, wow. Like I would think that she would be a little bit more excited. Excited that, you know. that your sisters went out of their way to just to make you feel special during this time. So, whatever, girl. But and then the baby shower, they were delivering food. And, you know, the, the the Mama E brought her manicures and pedicures in there. It was yeah. just like, you know, Tamar, you got you got it good. But, what, tri- Ashley, I, for the life of me, don't understand how you, how you beautiful African-American women Uh-oh. are able to change your hair so damn easy. <laughs> they go from bald to braids to weave to bald again to flat top. It's just like, how does that work? We got that magic touch. You know we be hooking some stuff up. We You got to. Is it wigs? You can do wigs, you can do extensions, you can do clip-ins, you can do sew-ins. There's so many things. And then, P.S., not just black folk do it, honey. So, I mean, a lot of people do it. It's, I mean, it's people like to change up, especially women. It's just like changing shoes or changing right. your drawers. I'm gonna come, we do yeah. it every day. <laughs> I'm going to come and get, I'm going to come with like a Missy Elliott, this flap in my, you know, a piece right here for next time, guys. So you're going to see that. <laughs> I'm like, welcome to After Buzz TV. I'm Jesse <laughs> Carter. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? I really love I love their styles yeah. when it comes to their hair. The Braxton sisters are known for having nice weaves. Right. And, you know, I, I think that Toni Braxton, in this episode, she did wear her hair natural. I mean, well, in its natural state, meaning without the weave or extensions. And I thought she looked beautiful. So they're beautiful with or without. And I was really feeling the shortcut on Tony because it's so classic. It's right. just like to- classic Tony Braxton. Tony. Throwback. So, I mean, I'm loving it. I love their hair this season. It's the same thing with, like, when you see Halle Berry when she goes back oh to that pixie. Oh, my gosh, yeah. That made her famous, yeah. you know? That she, mm-hmm. th- they say Halle Berry has one of the most amazing hairstyles in all of Hollywood yeah. because it, it just fits her, you know? It's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. So, you know what? Ha, <laughs> ha, After Brothers, talk about an amazing weekend. So, last Last night, I got home at 3 a.m., and, you know, I'm not tired, so I was like, I'm going to watch a movie. Well, I've had Serial Buddies in my queue all weekend long. I've been watching it over and over again. If you have not seen Serial Buddies, you need to stop what you're doing and hashtag download that ish right now. It's hilarious. <laughs> After Buzz CEOs Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro have produced and starred in this movie that is just exquisite. You thought the 40-year-old virgin was funny. You thought, I don't know, Anchorman was funny. Serial Buddies has got them all beat. It's like, I don't know. It's like Dumb and Dumber meets Dexter. That's yeah. how, that's how, that's how I describe it. It's so funny. And, nor, and it takes a lot to get me to laugh. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I think everything's stupid. So everybody <laughs> does great family fun, very enthusiastic, two thumbs up. Do it. Do not miss out on the movie because it's amazing. You can download it on iTunes. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. It will be on your, on your to-do list and playlist all week long. And speaking of iTunes, make sure that you go to iTunes and rate, comment, and share. Download this podcast as well as all of AfterBuzz TV and shows. And Serial And Serial Buddies. <laughs> rate, comment, and share. Give us five stars. This is the season finale. We're going to miss you guys, but oh. let us know if we did amazing this season or let us know what we can do for next season to make the show even more better. Even more better? Even you're, more better. You're a, you're, you're a, you are okay. an educator. You know what? You have a master's all, degree. And all, education, and you said more better. <laughs> oh my god! First of all, I can't even believe you're gonna put me out there like that. <laughs> I mean, you are an educated woman. Okay. You said the funner, more better. Okay, so check this out, y'all. <laughs> this is what y'all can do. Make sure y'all leave us a comment and let us know if we can do anything. Excuse me. Just leave us a comment on iTunes. Oh, All right, so let's get back to the... <laughs> Wait. Hey, Steven. Hey, Steven. Marissa, hey, we can hear everything. What's you guys, up? You guys got a party going on in there. Oh, there we now, go. Now, now it's All quiet. Right, now it's go. quiet. All right, so getting back to the Braxton family values. So, uh, so we also get to see Tony and her sisters do a Harlem Shake video, yes. which was pretty funny. It was. A little bit too late, though, because Harlem Shake, that craze kind of died out about two months ago. However, yeah. it was great. Yeah, it was good. And then, you know what? It died out about two months ago, but because this is, like, pre-recorded, we don't know. They didn't film it then. Yeah, so right. they did it about the right time. It was great. It was funny. I and, loved it. And they're also talented. They all 
all, I mean, they all just have their own personality because how many families you know would do a Harlem Shake video and all, and like all the girls just go, they were going ham in that video. <laughs> Tony, and Tony can't dance. No. Tony cannot can dance. Not. So she was kind of like slaying the beast, you know? Yeah. Was, I was like, go ahead, Tony Braxton. You've been taking some, you've been taking some classes with Rosario and Jamal there. <laughs> You better get your life. Yeah, it was awesome. I really love all of the, these sisters, you know, especially how they come together. And we've seen throughout this season all of the attitudes and the conflicts that they have had, but they always come together as a family. And that's what keeps me watching Braxton Family Values right. because you always know at the end of the day, they're all going to come together with love and support each other. So I was loving it. I know. It, there was a moment in this episode when Tony was really being vulnerable with Babyface mm -hmm. about, you know, relationships and about men. And, Ooh, and it seems yes. like she's not over Carrie. She's not. Oh, my goodness. This is, I really, okay. So when she said, and I want a guy's perspective. Okay. And a after Buzzer's out there, please let us know how you feel as well. Okay, so when a, a, a couple breaks up, and Tony Braxton was like, okay, well, I didn't expect him to move on so fast. I right. didn't expect him to move on. And this goes to what you were saying, like, I don't think that she's over him. How do you, like, how would you feel if you broke up with someone and they moved on already? And it's only been, like, a year. Like, I'm, I guess my question is, what is too short of a what time is too period soon. yeah to move on it's it's all subjective and relative i mean it just depends on the type of relationship you have they were married and they had children so that's a whole other thing yeah. but i've been in a relationship where the person i was dating moved on quickly actually the first person i was like ever in love with that happened tragic but, and it is because you're you know in a relationship more times than not, someone is a little bit more invested than the other person. But does that mean that that person is more invested, you know, the person that does not move on? Or does it mean that, you know, this other person is trying to, is moving on so quickly because they're hurt, they're they're, hurt right. and they're just like, you know what, I just, need, I just need someone to fill that void? Could be. Could, could be. I mean, yeah. it, just depends on, it depends on the person. I know for myself... I don't believe in I don't believe in calling moving on or not so much moving on. You can date, but to go from one to be a serial dater or a serial relationship mm -hmm. person, right? No, that's that's ridiculous. Exactly. I mean, I mean, people who do that are not, I guess, emotionally healthy, mm -mm. or they need that kind of companionship, exactly. or they're needy. I can do bad by my damn self. Holla. You know, and you and the, and you relationships are things you choose to be in, and so yeah. the relationships that you want to be in should be the ones that you feel are equal and you, you give and take you 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 give to that person as they give to you you and you enhance each other and i think that and tony was married to carrie for a long time yes. I mean, and he and he played such an intricate part in her career with mm -hmm. producing albums and music so and i don't think she i she was i think she was talking about just overall men exactly. in general mm -hmm. but it was really nice to see them talk and then babyface said you know well women want to control it's about control and do you think that women want to control what happens in the relationship i don't think so at all i think that women are so in tune with their emotions and often sometimes we do let emotions overrule like what you know in a sense that it's kind of controlling because we'll be like okay well you know, because my heart is just hurting so much, I'm going to try and control the situation. Yeah. But I just think that if you let your emotions do that, then that'll drive you to, you know, act a certain way. But overall, I don't think that women, some women can be controlling, but in this circumstance, I don't think that Tony's trying to be controlling. Yeah. Um, she's just trying to figure things out. She's confused. She's like, why would you move on after all that we've been through? Why not try and get me back? Well, they you know did get I mean? back together, though. In season two, she said that her and Carrie were dating and but that makes things even more messy it's like okay you're trying to win me back but then like you don't just date someone out of the blue like you have to like I mean you can but to be in a serious committed relationship and then break up and then two weeks later you're dating someone else like where did this person yeah, come from that's... it's just mess it's just too much and I feel like you know, Carrie probably is not completely over Tony because he didn't give himself time to heal right. and he didn't give himself time to actually move on. So I think that they both may still have that what if. Like, Tony, because to me in this episode, I kind of got a glimpse of Tony saying, um, you know, I wish he would have fought more for me because I still do love him. Well, and I don't think I don't think you ever truly, really get over your ch true love. Like no, Mar you Mariah don't. Carey says, nothing can compare to your first true love. You know, like you just <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you just you can't help who you love. You know, exactly. and 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 people and people try to front and try to say, oh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm over it. But at the end of the day, when it you know, I mean, after brothers, ha, level with the brother real quick. 
You try to act like it doesn't matter, like, oh, I see this person, whatever. But the minute you're alone with that person again, you're like, hi, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, well. but, when you, but when you're, like, with your friends and stuff, you're just like, nah, she ain't nobody, you know? But then when they get that text, get that Facebook message, you get that email, <laughs> you're like, yeah, I'll meet you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you look good, too. You know? And then, so, but... It's so true. Tony was very vulnerable and Babyface. It was I just loved that it. connection was really, really cool it. and seeing them because he, Babyface had a messy divorce with Tracy Edmonds and mm -hmm. they had a, they had a business together and twins and the whole bit, you know. Yeah. So, you know, but it was cute. But relationships were really strong for the finale because we finally get to see Mama E and the girls meet her new guy. Yeah. And that's where Tony's that's where Tony's like, "How's his credit?" Yeah. I th <laughs> oh. you know what? I think that the the questions that they were asking were very inappropriate. I don't care if these are your daughters or your sisters or your brothers. I feel that, you know, you guys are not in this relationship right. between him and I. And those, like, I don't even think Mama E asked him those, those questions. questions sure. So, I mean, I understand it was fun and, you know, ha ha, but it was just totally inappropriate. Yeah, well, t okay, Tony gave more of an in depth explanation as to why she was asking because she wanted someone to be she wanted her mom to be with someone who's financially stable that mm -mm. but at no. the end of the day like my mom my mom has been divorced for 16 years right mm -hmm. and she dates and i'm like i'm not going to ask her about you know th she's a grown woman she can date whoever she wants and plus that's the beauty of being alive you, you never stop experiencing people you never stop learning why does it always have to sure learn from your past mistakes learn yeah. from the learn from things that you have so you make you like oprah says when you know better you do better mm -hmm. however th w the fun in dating <laughs> is going in head first and seeing what happens that, exactly. th that's life you, you yolo right mm -hmm. it's a motto <laughs> so I don't. I think that the sisters meddle a little bit too much. The daughters meddle a little bit too much, but we see Tracy being kind of salty. I mean, she was saltier than some Lowrys, man. She was not. And apparently, the mom a couple episodes ago told her to stay out of her business. So she's still kind of heated about that, which was awkward because it wasn't even like, "Hey, Tracy, Mama E didn't say she's gonna slap the piss out of you like she told <laughs> Tamar." So her telling you to stay out of her business was just like, like you know, telling her to fall back. But Tracy was being real salty. It was almost awkward. It was like me and you being at a table full of people. No, I got a story for you. I went to New Orleans with my brother and his wife, mm -hmm. and my mom, and my stepmom, and my dad. We are at the dinner table. My stepmom starts trying to like be come for me, my brother, like uh -huh. saying stuff, just being very inappropriate, and it was so awkward out of nowhere. And people were at the table were like, "What's going on?" That's how I thought today's show looked when Tracy was just being very, you know, mm, I don't know how to say, just. Well, you know what? This is what this is what I got from that situation. Everyone was at the table, but everyone at the table besides Tracy re regarding the sisters were coming at dude, you know, inappropriately. Right. And Mama E was like, you know, Tracy, stay out of my business or whatever. I think that Tracy was a little upset given that Mama E was like, stay out of my business, but all everyone else is all up in your business and you're not trying to put a stop to this at right. all. She and felt then, singled out. Exactly. It's like, okay, well, don't come at me like that. And then everybody else is all up in this man's business. And there's a certain, like I said, you don't ask questions like that at that time and those questions should be directed towards mama e not at him if you have a question about his financial state that's embarrassing to ask him like that so right. and i think that you should ask mama e and then if she wants to tell you then she can tell you it's none of their business and so tracy had an attitude she had an attitude with the sisters with the mama and it just came off like she didn't like the dude because she had an attitude was that mature no but i right. mean she's human so i would have had attitude too whatever well the mom ex asked the date to excuse himself which is rude too that, uh, yeah like what is wrong with y'all can, can like, you she's like that's it thanksgiving dinner can you leave the room real quick why don't you get up pull him to like or pull tracy to the side and say you know what what's going on with you tracy let right what's going on like she basically kicked him out exactly. like, okay you can come you're in time out right now you can return after this commercial break exactly you know and then tracy really didn't give and then the way she acted was very flippant and she didn't really she was just like I don't know, being like pretty much disrespecting her mom to the fullest. Yeah. Now, do you think that was staged? Um, you know what? I think that it was staged to a certain point, but the emotions was raw. Like I think that they were raw, 
real. Tracy really did have an attitude. And then we'll get into why I feel like she, uh, in, she was just in her head a lot. I don't really think she was present at the time. And then she was just irritated. And people get irritable and they get irritated. And then they, she found her sisters annoying. Cause I, I was sitting there like, we all are annoying. annoying. Why are you all up in the man's business? Yeah, yeah, well. I didn't like it. A week, a week passes, and T Tamara wasn't there because she's upset that Tony <laughs> is moving back to Atlanta. Yeah. I don't understand this bi-coastal traveling. First of all, I hate flying to the East Coast. It takes too damn long in coach. And no, I'm not a bala. I do not fly first class. However, if you want to buy me a first class ticket, you can. <laughs> Book me at jasoncarter.com. Um, but, you know, she's moving back to Atlanta for her music. I thought fate... That's what she says for her, her the music and but I thought she came to LA to pursue her music. Yeah. It's very it's very weird, very strange, very interesting to me. But whatever. Anyway, so yeah, Tony's going back to Atlanta and Tamar wasn't at the um the intervention, the call of the, the call of hands to talk about Tracy's attitude. And in that we find out something huge. Yeah. Ashley cared to elaborate. Well, <laughs> we find out that Tracy man was cheating on her <gasps> and it is said that she I mean he has like a five year old son with this woman that he was cheating on Tracy with this is some bull crap because I thought that this dude was cool Solid. people it's like I'm like okay I'm really loving him you know halfway through this season I'm like I really want to see more of him because I'm loving how he interacts with Tracy he's he a bring, family man yeah I'm just a love I like his dreads kind of sort of but I was really feeling him <laughs> right and now dude done cheated on my home girl right so now I got an attitude yeah it was just like he was Gabe 2.0 yes Gabe like, cleaned it up really Gabe they probably like I don't know it must be like some Braxton club where the husbands just meet and decide to cheat on their women. I don't get it. What's going on? Let yeah. us know. I mean, and, it, and, then, and then what was even more weird was that Tawanda knew and Tawanda spilled the tea. It was like, Tawanda, how do you know this? And she looked. Like, you know what? I think that um, because the kid may be roughly about five years old, that this may have happened a long time right. ago and it was just may have been like a one-time thing and he messed up had a kid by this woman and but he doesn't have any relationship with the woman he just takes care of her kid right. and now it's just coming out yeah. so hopefully they still do have a really stable marriage and it was a mistake on his and part and tracy knew about and it right tracy, i don't think she knew about it i think that she just is now discovering it well you know the, the, uh, season two they were on the boat and they talked about their kind of open relationship and and things, and then one of the sisters, one of the sisters made a comment like, "Oh, you you still let your man cheat on you?" And it was like, "Ooh," and I missed that. I don't think, but you know, I don't think that was maybe. I don't know. I don't know how I missed that. But mm -hmm. so maybe they have a history of infidelity. infidelity. Yeah, it's now come, now. This, of course, the kids the product of that. But nonetheless, oh, that's so unfortunate. Right. Like, why would you? Oh, Jesus, help us, Lord. Again, do you think that? That's the the producer's way of making the Braxtons more soap operatic. Maybe, I don't know, like maybe making them, trying to bring the Braxtons to a whole new, because before, you know, for the last couple of seasons, they've been very light, you know, it's yeah. been like, you know, mm -hmm. this family drama, but now they're trying to make the Braxtons like, um, Take more it to of a, dr level. like a dr kind of a, a dramedy. Yeah. Maybe, you know, because they're exposing a lot, you know, they're, they're, they're really, we're, we're getting a, a really clear insight into some issues that the Braxtons have. Yeah. Because it wasn't always that deep. I mean, you had Trina and Gabe, you know, yeah. but that this was a bombshell. This was like pretty much, yeah, like Tony said, Maripovich. <laughs> Wait, you got to do, you got to do Tamar's reaction. Bitch, what? <laughs> <laughs> Trace, this is the perfect opportunity for you to get out and be like, deuces. <laughs> gosh like Tamar's reaction was absolutely hilarious and you know what I wish them the best Tracy and her husband hopefully this was just like you know something that Tracy didn't know about and they're gonna work on it and we're gonna see it next you know season hopefully everything is peachy clean yeah with his track record unless right. he gonna be gone uh, yeah it, it, again it was a finale though so they need to have something some kind of Cliffhanger, and it wasn't, and it was, but if, if it was not real, it was believable. But I just came from left field. It was just, it, it there was, was no, yeah. there was no kind of like um, inkling or hinting to it throughout the course of the season. And they're showing Tracy and Kevin ride bikes together. You know, it was just yeah, weird, weird, yeah. weird. And and when when um, Trina 
not Trina, when Tawanda told everyone her, you know, how she, re like, not how she reacted, but when she gave the news, and then she, like, leaned back and kind of, like, not snickered, but, you know, her expression just wasn't... Authentic. Like, yeah, I'm like, okay, so are is this a joking matter, or, you know, what's up with you? Because if your sister... Yeah. Right. Said uh -uh. Or it would be so it would be heated, right? Exactly. It would be like, oh, girl, what? Yes. Bitch, what? <laughs> <laughs> now, Tamar. <laughs> I know I keep bringing it up, but seriously, like I felt like she was like keeping it. She was like, "Uh, uh, this is crazy." Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. This, I guess, it leads us into our predictions. Yes. Want to talk about Let's what's going to happen next season? <laughs> and now, <laughs> it's right. TV predictions. 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 Go ahead. Oh, I love that echo. I'm loving it. Predictions. Steven. Predictions. <laughs> predictions. <laughs> so I think that, you know, Tracy and her husband are going to break up. We're not going to see much of him next season. I don't think so. Because Tracy, to me, seems like the type of girl that you mess up and you're done. It's a wrap. Yeah, we'll mess up to this point. Like, you had another baby on me. And even if you cheated on me in the past, even if I cheated on you in the past, this should have came up then before we act, both got our act together. So right. I feel like it's just too messy. And even, you know... I know it's for better or for worse, but honestly, come on, you had a baby with another woman while we were married, and the dude is like my height. He probably like 16 years old. Yeah. We don't know. They say five, but you never know. <laughs> he probably gonna come. We gonna see him next season with a mustache. <laughs> right. With, I'm and like, with a car. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so. I agree with you. I predict that Tony is actually gonna, we're gonna hear some music from Tony soon. Mm -hmm. um, when we come back, Tamar will have had the baby, and we're gonna finally Congratulations. see. She yeah. had the baby already. Oh. She had the baby already. I was going to save it for news and gossip. That's okay. But let's, yes. go, let's go into news and gossip then. <laughs> TV News. Yes, Tamar Braxton did welcome her lovely baby into the world. Actually, the day that it aired on for the season finale is the day that Tamar had the baby. So congratulations to Tamar. I cannot wait to see the baby's face. I is just it a boy or a girl? It is. You know what? I don't know. Let's check it out. Well, that's amazing. I wonder. I wonder if the baby's if it's a boy's we name. The Vincent Herbert Get Show Life Say What <laughs> Junior. <laughs> I'm so excited. You know, I am like, I just can't, because I follow uh, Tamar on Twitter, right? So I'm just like excited to see like when it shows up in my Twitter feed, the picture of the baby's face. I'm going to be so like, I'm going to send it to you. Nice, nice. Well, of course, the Braxtons are picked up for season four. Yep. And we, we just don't know when it's going to be airing. Because it's so awesome. But we do know that Tamar Vince is also picked up for season two. So that's yep. coming in the fall for sure in September. So it's going to be good. Yeah, you know, I, I, I want more of the Braxtons. I think that they need to have longer seasons and really really get together but you know when they do these short seasons because they're that popular and they're that mm -hmm. and they want to keep them on tv as often as frequent as possible because reality tv is easy to produce and cheap to produce but they have to follow these people's lives yeah. and make sure that they have things going on there in their life yeah. that makes it worth watching so we're definitely going to be back watching the braxton's all summer long and in the fall it's going to be good stuff and you know what? I think I'm. I think that she had a boy because I'm trying to visualize. The, the, oh, bam! There y'all go. See, I didn't want to say it was a girl, and then it ended up being a boy. So I was like, I don't know. He was but born it's June eighth. Yeah, it's a boy. So I'm so excited. I can't wait to see the little face of the new. It's the addition to the Braxton family. Um, family. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> After Buzzers, there you have it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this season for the Braxton Family Values. We'll be back next season for Tamar and Vince. Yes. And also for the Braxton Family Values. Such a good time. I am Jason J. Carter. You can find me on Twitter at JJC Forever and also on Facebook at the Jason J. Carter um, fan page. Ha, ha Ashley, Nina Marie Gray. <laughs> Always a pleasure hosting with you. You are a stunning beauty queen. All the best to you. You are my heart, my desire, and your epic. Aw, thank you. And guys, I'm Ashley. Well, he just gave me this amazing, you know. <laughs> you can't top that. I know, right? So anyway, follow me on Twitter at Tweet Nina Marie G and also on Instagram at Nina Marie Gray. Also follow me. Well, not follow me. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Would love to... You know, I guess I accept y'all. No stalkers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Until next time, you guys, have a great week, and thank you for watching. Bye. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. 
to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. I, that's my jam. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.